Hey guys, how's it going? I'm making this video to explain the parable of the wicked and slothful servant. If you guys have been enjoying the videos, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. God bless. Alright, so this parable is often taken out of context by false teachers to teach work salvation. In Matthew 25, there's three parables. The ten virgins, the wicked servant, and the sheep and goats. This parable of the wicked servant is right in the middle of the other two parables, and those parables are talking about salvation by grace versus works. I made videos on the ten virgins parable and the sheep and goats parable, and I'm going to put the link in the pinned comment. The whole theme of Matthew 25 is grace versus works, just as the theme of Matthew 24 is end times prophecy, and the theme of Matthew 23 is a rebuke against the Pharisees. We're about to read this parable, but first I want to tell you guys that a talent is a measure of weight, usually for precious metals. One talent is 75 pounds, and if that's a talent of gold, it's worth about 1.7 million dollars in today's money. Matthew 25, 14-30 reads, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and that in my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness." There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Alright, so before I explain this parable, I'm giving a shout out to Honorado Diamante. He told me what this parable means a while back when I was having trouble understanding it. And he has a great channel that I'm going to leave linked in the pinned comment. So in this parable, the first two servants represent children of God who were not only saved, but also lived faithful lives in service to the Lord. That's why when the Lord came back, he said, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So, because these first two servants lived in faithful service to the Lord, they were rewarded in heaven. Jesus said in Revelation 22:12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ is saved, but not every believer will receive a reward in heaven. 
The Bible goes into more detail on this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, about the wicked and slothful servant, he was unbelieving and unsaved. He squandered his opportunity to be saved and faithfully served the Lord afterwards. The other two servants were saved because they were told, Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord, which represents heaven. The wicked and slothful servant was unsaved because he was cast into outer darkness, which represents hell. Notice in verse 24, He thought the Lord was a hard man. This reminds me of how work salvation people see Jesus as a hard man that desires to condemn everybody. Then in verse 25, the wicked servant said, And I was afraid. Work salvation people are afraid that God is going to send them to hell, and a lot of times that causes them to be lazy. They see God as a hard slave driver, and they live in fear of messing up. So a lot of them end up doing nothing to serve God. To sum it up, the first two servants were children of God that lived faithful lives of service to Jesus, and they were rewarded in heaven. The wicked, slothful servant was unsaved and unbelieving. God's children that understand His grace towards us have an abundant mindset and serve Him out of love and gratitude. Matthew 11:28 reads, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Works trusters are wicked and slothful, and nothing they do can please God. There's one more piece of evidence I want to show you guys that proves the wicked servant was a works truster. In verse 24, he called him Lord, but was unsaved. In Matthew 7:21 to 23, the people who boast of their works on Judgment Day call Jesus Lord, Lord. In the Ten Virgins parable right before this one, the works trusters call Jesus Lord, Lord, but he said to them, I know you not. In the parable of the sheep and goats right after this one, the goats call Jesus Lord. So all these people who think they're Christians are calling Jesus Lord but they're not saved because they haven't believed. They believed in their works, that they need evidence, at fruit, and obedience, and repenting of sins, surrendering your life. They think that their works play a part in their salvation, and they've spit on the cross, and they're enemies of the cross. Let's spread the true gospel, guys, which is grace, that Jesus Christ paid it all. Nothing we do has anything to do with it, Works don't get us saved, keep us saved, or prove we're saved. Everything is what Jesus Christ did for us. Matthew 13.10 reads, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. God bless you guys. Have a good one.